How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be teaching you about how to play defense in NHL 25. I made the how to score video a couple days ago. Now it's time to show you guys how to defend those goals, and I'll show you guys right here in this video. We're going to go over four clips from my past stream, two off-the-rush defensive plays that I made, and two in-zone defensive plays that I made. And I'm going to tell you guys what my mindset was in these moments and how I play defense on it. But before we get to that, make sure to hit the socials down below. My Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, and Discord are down below. Make sure you guys hit those follows. Once again, we are live every single day of the NHL 25, so please come out and watch you guys can see my defense all my stream my offense on my stream all that stuff i record a lot of my youtube videos on stream now so please come out hit the falls and all those and uh, let's get in the video all right guys in this first clip this is gonna be an off the rush defensive play that i made so this guy starts to break out the puck here and he sends it up to martin st louis here as we'll let play uh just one second there we go so He's going to let play here, and I, I, I'm going to get Shea Weber, and I'm going to try to play him some man-on-man -man coverage. I feel like this game, it's very important to play man-on-man, -man, and just make sure you're with the guy. Don't step up. Don't try to get all aggro, or don't even play too defensive. It's just be right in the in, like, uncomfortable spot, right where you're right beside him, and you're kind of just waiting for him to make a move. Um, I see he doesn't really have anyone with him besides this guy over here, which we're going to try to wait and make sure that he's covered by coffee. And that's what I'm constantly looking for on, on this rush. Making sure that I'm controlling Weber, but also looking at coffee, seeing what he's doing and see how he's reading that, uh, that, hit, that far side winger there. So we'll let this play a little bit. Oh boy. Let's turn off that volume real quick. So he's going to make his way down. He's going to make his way down here. Once again, I'm still playing man on man defense here. And this guy is starting to get open a little bit, so I'm starting to get a little bit worried about that. But for now, it's still good. We'll make his way down, and he's going to stop right here. What I'm going to do is something that I've done in the past couple years, and it still works very, very well in this game, and that's called a poke switch. I might make a YouTube video on this later down the line about how to properly use it. But what I do personally is on two-on-twos in this situation, what I love to do is take the guy I'm controlling, poke check, and then switch to the guy back door to, bl to block the cross crease. This has been super sufficient for me on two on two plays because it completely eliminates any sort of chance this guy has if he has to make a move when I go and poke check him. Either he's gonna go poke, or he's gonna go fire far side, or he's gonna shoot it. He's gonna do something. That poke check should disrupt it. And if for some reason he beats my poke and passes across, I'm already switched to the other guy to pick it off. So this is a great example of it right here. So we're gonna write this. We're gonna write this roll here. Shea Weber, I poke check it there. Look what I did. Search, uh, switch right over to Paul Coffey. If he passes this over, I'm gonna be right here to pick it off before he could he, before he can get that pass over. But sure enough, the poke check uh, goes through. Weber picks it up, and that's how I moved up here. He ends up taking a tripping call on me, and we go back up the other way. This is something that I have done for a very, very long time, and it works super, super well. Add poke switching to your game, and you're going to see two on twos get eliminated super easily in the NHL 25. Now, let's get to the next clip here. This is another off the rush play that this guy's about to make. Now, this is a move that I like to do if the guy's outnumbered on offense. So, when he makes his pass up here, he's going to only have two guys up, and I have three guys back. This is why I, this is why I really like the 2 3, which you guys watch my strats video. That's the strategy I run. I really love having this third guy high at all times for these moments just like this. So, let's get into it. So, what he's going to do here is he's going to hit Paul Coffey. He's going to go up to LaFontaine here. He makes that pass to LaFontaine. Now, what most people would do is they'd probably take Paul Coffey here and they'd run right at him. And if he gets through, Pedersen can maybe make up for it, maybe catch him on the way. But LaFontaine's probably got good speed and he's going to fly past him, right? This is not what you want to do in NHL 25. What you want to do is you want to make precise poke checks and make sure the poke check you're taking is worth it and you have a backup plan. So, this is what I do next. What I do is I go and I switch to Pedersen right away. I take Pedersen and I want to take his back heel. I want to take away this option right here so that he can't go back to this guy or he can't cut towards the middle. Pedersen's going to go right at this guy's back foot. So this is what I do right here. I drag right Pedersen. Make sure that this guy can't have that pass back. And if he tries to go through here, he's going to have a much harder time because Pedersen will be in the way. Then what I do is I take Paul Coffey and I go to him. And this is where I, play, I make a precise poke that doesn't take myself out of the play. But it's enough to where it should get the puck off his stick. So this is what I do. I come in. I take that. Do a good poke. He tried, he tried cutting to the middle, as you can see. But I made a good poke, and if I missed, Coffee's going to be able to come back around and meet him back over here. And Pedersen's going to be able to disrupt him uh, back here as well. So this is something that I like to do off the rush. Once again, this is only if you really have some, uh, uh, if you have more defensemen than they have forwards coming up in the rush. 
this is what I would really recommend. Focus on applying pressure, but it's uncomfortable pressure. That's the number one thing I think in defense this year is you want to make sure that you're uncomfortable or you want to make them uncomfortable. Don't let, don't overcommit, don't undercommit. Be right in that sweet spot of I have to make a decision here and it's going to honestly, I'm going to have to get lucky to get through it. He, he could have gotten through here, but he, it would have gotten a couple bounces to get through it. Um, yeah, in the end, Paul Coffey with a great poke check. I am getting this puck right back and make my make my way up the ice right off that. That's how you defend off the rush. Once again, we're going to go through an overview. Make sure you have some back, back support. Make sure it's uncomfortable for people to make their way up the ice. And poke switching. Make sure you guys are doing poke switching because those can eliminate odd man rushes for you guys and help you guys play a lot better defense off the rush in NHL 25. Now let's move into the end zone defense that I want you guys to play. Make sure you guys watch these two clips that I have for you guys because this is going to be really important. So we have... This guy coming in on the right side, and he's about to make a, a pass back to his defenseman here. Now, probably should have been picked off by my guy here, but whatever. Um, makes his way up to the defenseman. What I want you guys to do is focus on what's his best option. What is his, what's his next play? What's his next move going to be? That's what you should be focused on in these zone, while also not overcommitting and leave yourself exposed. So, he's got Quinn Hughes to the point here. I believe he goes D to D. He does. So... In this moment right here, right when he goes D2D, or before he even gets it, look who's open right here. Elias Pedersen, who's probably got silver 1T, with the with the silver ring around him saying, hey, pass it to me. I want a green bean. I want to bear this top shelf. So my next so my next thought is, okay, I need to apply pressure to this guy right here, but also eliminate this option right here. So what I do is I take, I take Johnson. What did I talk about in the off rush? Poke switch. Poke switch. Take Johnson, poked him. The poke didn't happen, but I, I took Gooley and I completely took him took Pedersen away. And if he decided to make that pass over, it was an easy pick. Now, this guy does a very good job of being patient and not making the pass right away. So he does a little loop back. He goes back to D to D. And now I'm still in a situation where, yes, Gooley's a little bit high up here, but he should be able to get there. And now we have Solani getting open. Now, I'm pretty sure I actually don't poke switch in time. Because, yeah, I try to get the McDavid in time. But in this situation right here, Coase is in a good spot. So the play doesn't really matter. The Solani's goal or shot right here probably shouldn't go in. So I had really no problem taking that. And he went for a rebound shot. So the good thing about having your forwards pushing up and not over committing them is because you're allowing people to stay in front of your net for moments just like this. Solani goes for a rebound shot. Look how many people I have in here. Three people all right here inside the crease versus uh his two guys on the outside this is super important because rebounds and one timers are huge in this game right now and for people that are trying to shoot one tees and they aren't going in it's usually an absolute like cluster in front of the net make sure you over, aren't over committing your guys because we have three people right here Makar was easy to pick up that rebound and we were able to make a play as soon as this happened yeah made an easy breakout right after that that's how you defend an in-the-zone play. So let's enforce what I just taught you in another D-zone clip we have here. So this guy has it in the bottom uh, by the boards here uh, in my own zone. And I currently have Pedersen, and I'm playing him hip-to-hip -hip, uh, defense. I'm not letting him cut in. I'm not letting him make a play. I'm just keeping him to the outside because that's really all you can do in this game. Bumps don't work that well. Pokes are a little bit inconsistent. And sticklers are solid, but you have to be in perfect position. So in moments like this where I don't really have anything, you just want to keep him to the outside as much as you can. So what he's going to do here is he is going to come up, come up the wall and he's going to give it up to the D here. Now, lots of people are all going for DDDs. And I'm sure you guys have gotten scored, on, uh, scored a bunch of DDDs on. And trust me, I know it's frustrating. I've had to deal with it myself. But a big thing with DDDs is you have to recognize that it's happening. Obviously, you see Seth Jones with the ring here. And you want to make sure that you don't give him the easy the easy one T. Make it hard. Make it try to get through a guy to get to the net. So what we do here is he goes from Gooley over to Seth Jones. One T. I read that right away and instantly grab Medano to block it. Now, if he doesn't block this, good chance of going in. Kosa slid. He did he got the wrong animation too to block. If he goes top shelf here, that's probably in. So it was a big block by me. But now what is he gonna do? He's gonna get it right back. So now we're back in a situation where now we're scrambling a little bit. He he just shot he just shot a, a point shot. He got the puck back. Pressure meter is going up. Lots of people are going to panic in this situation. Seeing the pressure meter go, go up gives people the most anxiety. I, I, and trust me, I feel it too. But you guys got to be patient in this. Don't let the pressure meter affect the way you play defense fully. 
So what, what you got to do here is keep being patient. He's going to loop back around here. He's going to go D to D again. He's going to stay on the outside. But once again, I'm not over committing on anything. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going you know, right at him, spamming, poking, all this stuff. What did I do in this clip that I did in the exact same one in the last one? Took Badano, took his next option. I thought maybe he'd go down low, so I took Badano. Didn't overcommit him, but just kept him there. Made sure... Oh, actually, no, I did a little bit overcommit. That's on me. But <laughs> um, but then he goes back to the D here. And I pull coffee up here. It's a scramble sometimes. The defense isn't supposed to be pretty. But he goes for another shot here. The main, the main thing you want to focus on is having guys in front of the net. As soon as you leave people out of the home plate... That's when stuff gets, you know, that's when stuff gets frisky. Look how many guys we have in the home plate versus his. We have what? One, two, three versus his one. Making sure that you guys have guys collapsing towards the goalie when there's what when there's shots like this trying to get through makes your defense a whole lot better. So what what do you happens here? He shoots it. It's an easy pickup. Now it's a little bit of a scramble after that, but eventually I do get this puck back and I'm able to make a breakout. D zone is not easy, but you have to be patient. That's the number one thing. Be patient. Don't let the pressure meter change the way you want to play defense. Use poke switching. Take away the next guy's uh, next move. But overall, just make sure you're patient. Make sure you guys have front of, uh, people in front of the net, boxing people out, and you guys are going to be playing a lot better defense in NHL 25. So that's it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was to show you guys how to play better defense in NHL 25. I hope this helps. Um, once again, I'm not the perfect defensive guy in the game at, at all i do play well in tournaments and, and you know defense necessarily isn't my strong suit but i feel like i do have advanced knowledge of defense and i hope this video does help you guys let me know if you guys have any more questions i'll, I'll make sure to respond to them in the comments and once again make sure to hit the socials my twitch twitter tiktok and discord down below watch me live i'm live every day of nhl 25 and so yeah that's the video hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace